Hey, remember a few weeks back when I told you about Jordan Peterson, the personal responsibility guru who gave himself brain damage by paying Russians to put him in a coma so he could sleep through the withdrawal symptoms because he got addicted to benzos? Yeah, saying that all out loud still sounds weird. Like we're in the most fucked up timeline. But anyway, uh, I mentioned that he has always been very anti-political correctness, anti-safe space, anti-feminism, anti-anything that attempts to level the playing field for straight white dudes and everyone else. One prominent point he used to make all the time was that it's a lie that women are underrepresented in STEM fields because of sexism. He insisted that the real reason was because women naturally, biologically, did not like science, technology, engineering, or mathematics. And to back this up, he pointed to a study published in 2018 in Psychological Science by psychologists uh, Giesbert Stowett and David Geary, showing that women were less likely to enter STEM fields in countries with better gender equality. In other words, when women have more freedom to choose what career they want to go into, as opposed to going into whatever society forces them to, they choose non-STEM fields. Peterson liked to talk about this study all the time in lecture after lecture around the world. Here he is speaking to uh, Bettina Arndt, an Australian anti-feminist and prominent pedophile apologist. Uh, Listen to what he has to say about this study. This cannot be shouted from the rooftops enough. The more egalitarian this society, the larger the differences. So, and then the same goes for interest, people versus things. And then, and that manifests itself in differential proclivity to enroll in STEM fields. So there was a great paper released, the Atlantic Monthly just wrote an mm-hmm. article on it this week showing that as societies become more egalitarian, the gap between enrollment, the, the enrollment gap between men and women in STEM fields increases. Yeah. So, but, and what do the feminists say about that? Pseudoscience. It's mm-hmm. like, yeah. well, first of all, for a feminist who's influenced by someone like Judith Butler, to claim anything is pseudoscience, is, is laughable beyond, beyond description. But it's infuriating to anyone who's a sensible social scientist and, and practitioner. Woo! Now that quote did not age well, did it? Um, that study has now been corrected. And it's worth considering whether or not cor- the correction is overly kind to the point that it really should have just been retracted. One of the reasons why it's good to be cautious when discussing new studies is that no study can be considered truly solid until it's replicated. Uh, You can swear up and down that your numbers are accurate and your statistical models are appropriate, but we don't really know until some uninvolved third party comes along and does the whole thing again from scratch. And that's tricky because oftentimes scientists aren't rewarded for replicating work. In the publish or perish environment of academia, a lot of researchers are desperately looking for novel findings that journals will want to publish. Not many journals are interested in publishing publishing replications because they're just not interesting enough. And that is a true shame. So it's a relief that researchers at Harvard's Gender Sci Lab took the time to replicate this one, considering how much attention the study was getting, not just from Jordan Peterson and his legion of men's rights activists, but from legit mainstream news sources like The Atlantic. Gender size Sarah Richardson went to work and immediately discovered that the figures in the original study were wrong. The original study authors claimed to have used data from UNESCO, uh, but then said that, for instance, 40.7% of Algerian women were STEM grads when the UNESCO data showed that 53.55% of STEM grads were women. It turns out the original researchers used a more complicated figure that they hadn't bothered to disclose in their paper. They took the total percentage of women who graduated with STEM degrees, added it to the total percentage of men, and then divided by the percentage of women. Which is fine, 
But that's a brand new way to consider these numbers. And they didn't say what they were doing, let alone why they were doing it. And when the Harvard researchers did that to all of the other numbers, they still found some that were wrong. They were just miscalculated. The Harvard researchers point out that an even bigger problem is how the original researchers chose which markers of gender equality to look at and which to ignore. Uh, Stoet and Geary used the Global Gender Gap Index, which is a report from the World Economic Forum that measures quantifiable public data showing how often women are disadvantaged in the areas of health, education, economy, and politics. Richardson and her team point out that the GGGI does not measure opportunity, empowerment, or STEM encouragement. By design, the GGGI is not intended to be used to causally explain outcomes, and gender equal outcomes cannot be interpreted as providing information on causal context within countries. In short, the GGGI is neutral with respect to how outcomes of parity are achieved. By using this one tool for their study, a tool that was not designed for this purpose, the study itself is called into question. When the Harvard researchers used other standards to measure equality, the initial finding disappeared. Even if they hadn't disappeared, the researchers point out that it would tell us nothing about the cause of this correlation. You'd also have to look at countries that share a language, a border, a history, a culture, and you'd have to look at how those numbers change over time as a country improves or exacerbates its gender gap. In other words, it's a bit more complicated than that. It's even more complicated than what I can discuss in one short video. So if you're interested in learning more about what the researchers at Harvard are doing, uh, they've provided a handy overview of some of the obstacles standing in the way of the study of gender equality around the world and why the gender gap paradox isn't really paradoxical at all. I highly encourage you to go read it in full, especially if you've ever been at all convinced by anything Jordan Peterson has to say about the gender gap.